in the nation. I can feel a storm of brewing here in Cameron. There is a buzz. Even though most of the students are gone, finals are over. We're in the holiday break, but we are in the basketball spirit underway. Wofford and Duke here at Cameron. Duke really extends the pressure. It's going to be important for Wofford not to turn the basketball over. This is Murphy. Ryan Larson shares the ball handling duties. Shot clock under 10. They play four out, one in. This is Chavez Goodwin. Missed the uh, rim, and he doesn't realize that the shot clock is going to go off. That's one of those situations where you got to go in off of two feet, jump stop, and then make a move. Never was on balance with that one-footed shot there. And so at the point for Duke, Jordan Goldwire making his second start of the year. This one in place of Trey Jones. And this is now the seventh different lineup to start a game in the first 11 for Coach K. Good to see that man back and healthy, Cassius Stanley. One of the guys on this Duke team that can really stretch the floor at 43% from three. Stanley coming back from a hamstring injury. Remember, though, Duke is playing for the first time in 13 days since they went to Blacksburg and beat Virginia Tech. Second try for Goodwin is good. Much more on balance in the center of the floor. There was no help on the weak side. Alex O'Connell gives to Goldwire. Here is one of the four captains, Jack White. Carey had it for a moment, but it comes to Storm Murphy. Nathan Hoover around and out. If Wofford's going to give Duke a ball game tonight, they need Hoover to make his shots. Young man averaging nearly 14 points per game. All-conference player. Nice pass. Give the assist to Goodwin and the bucket to Ryan Larson. Gold wire number 14 and White turn, peeked at the basketball, and then that's exactly what you should do is cut back door. Good pass underneath as well. We're two minutes in. Trying to find White inside, draws a crowd, poked away. Larson was the man who got a hand in there. Got a five three-point shooters. Trevor Stump is one of them. Top ten in the conference at 43%. Absolutely, and those are opportunities where Wofford can score ahead of the defense. Duke's got to do a better job of communicating and getting matched up to shooters. Well, in the win over Carolina on Sunday as Carey gets deep, once he catches the ball that close, forget about it. Well, we showed you that in the open, and that is one of the many ways that Duke likes to get him the basketball on that right block. Wofford was practicing some baseline double teams. You got to get there a lot more quickly. Two feet in the paint, he's deadly. Here is Stump, who scored 19 points against Carolina. Good ball movement to find Hoover. His second attempt is up and over the top of the backboard, so it goes back to the Blue Devils. Well, head coach Jay McCauley in his first year at Wofford as the head coach, he was associate head coach the last couple of years, said the first eight minutes of this game tonight, Fonz, are going to be crucial. Yeah, and they've responded well so far, keeping the basketball away from Carey, who can punish them down in the painted area. And they've been able to get out in transition and on the offensive glass as well. Try to handle this environment, not turn the basketball over. Goodwin with 10 on the shot clock. Working against Javin Delorier into the game. The jump hook is good for the redshirt junior from Blythewood, South Carolina. Because Duke has to stay home on the shooters on the perimeter, he'll have those one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the middle of the floor all night long. Fon's pace and tempo so far, does it favor one side or the other? So far, Wofford's done a great job of preventing that which is Duke getting into the painted area. I love the patience there by Duke throwing it inside. They're bigs. They have so much more size on the interior. Duke's got to look to throw it over the top. What a beautiful seal inside by Delarie and a nice delivery by Alex O'Connell. So going out with the foul is Goodwin. Just his first, but we've got to keep track of that because there is much less size for the Terriers than the Blue Devils. Trey Hollowell, Messiah Jones come into the game for Wofford. 
as Javin Delorier, the senior from Shipman, Virginia, one of the four captains, completes the three-point play. Yeah, he didn't play well early in the season, found himself in a lot of foul trouble, but has guarded well the last two games without fouling. For Duke to get to a Final Four, he's going to have to be a major contributor off the bench. And you know what, Delorier has not missed a shot from the field since November 22nd. He's made his last 10 shots. Rebound goes to Matthew Hurt, the freshman from Rochester, Minnesota. And here is Wendell Moore, Jr. White, bottled up, fights through it, and lays it in. What a beautiful baseline screen, and Jack White just sat down in that area. Duke, 10, Wofford, 9. Holloway with the basketball, being guarded by Joey Baker. Nice feet inside and a strong layup by Messiah Jones. And that's what happens when Wofford gets dribble penetration to the baseline. All of a sudden you get to looking at the basketball and able to make those little short bounce passes inside. Really nice catch there by Messiah. Duke's got to continue to probe the inside, get the ball in the paint area. Deloria active and draws the foul. Got ourselves a ball game. Wofford up one on Duke. Turnovers committed, and they shot the lights out, as these Terriers do. Yeah, 14 made threes. This is a team that makes 11. That's second in the nation, and I felt that North Carolina did a poor job of running them off the line. Trevor Stump was the man who led them with 19 points, one off his career high. And so now that gets us thinking, okay, how, it doesn't happen very often yeah. where a non-conference team comes into Tobacco Road and plays Carolina Duke back-to-back, -back, and how often does a team, conference or otherwise, beat those two teams mm -hmm. in such close proximity? Well, our friends at Elias and at the uh, ESPN Stats and Information Department say that the last time a team went back-to-back -back games at Carolina and Duke, and won both of them. You have to go all the way back to 1975. Lefty Drizel's Maryland Terrapins, wow. led by John Lucas and Brad Davis, <laughs> beat the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils in successive games here in North Carolina. Wow. Precedent has been set. So that's what you've got Wofford thinking about, although Jay McCauley doesn't want to think about that yet. Well, I'll tell you what. As Matthew Hurt has his first two, fourth lead change already. Coach McCauley didn't change up anything. No. They went home back to campus, about yeah. a three and a half hour drive back to Spartanburg <laughs> yes. and came back. But they came back into the same hotel, yes. same meals, same routine, same everything as they had over the weekend in Chapel Hill. And there were several benefactors that wanted to come along that weren't here the first time. They were like, nah, no, 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 we got to leave you at home this time. <laughs> no offense. Yep. We're just a little superstitious. One of the assistant coaches is actually in the same room as last time. Foul on the rebound. And uh, Moore. And Storm Murphy. And it's Murphy who's going to get the foul. That is his first. Duke has superior size, and so their ability to be able to control that backboard is going to be important as this game goes along. And there is the 72-year-old Chicago legend, Northsider Cubs fan. How about that? Basketball Hall of Famer and, uh, oh, by the way, the winningest coach in <laughs> Division I men's college basketball history. Five NCAA championships. Impressive. Well, we could spend the entire two hours just going yes. through his resume. It really <laughs> is remarkable what he has done, what he has built and sustained at Cameron Indoor. That foul is on Cassius Stanley, his first. Yeah, Ryan Larson, number 11 there in black, looking a little woozy here. And that's a tough kid. He was a, a sensational high school football player yes. at Creighton Durham Hall mm -hmm. in St. Paul, Minnesota. He led the state of Minnesota both in tackles and interceptions two years ago. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot to get him out of the ballgame. Yeah, it does. Donovan Feem Love now running the point for the Terriers. This is Nathan Hoover. 
Trey Hollowell crosses over the defender. Little step back. The Laurier clears the glass. Tough entry pass from Stanley. Deep fortunate to keep possession. Let's show you what happened to Larson. As he's sliding along, watch his head, folks. Ooh, right on the shin bone there. Wow. Hope he's okay. And yeah, you can see him as he stood up a little bit. He started to stagger just a little bit, so there's nothing too serious. When he carried back in, he made a double piece. Passing out of it to get the easy deuce from Matthew Hurt. Oftentimes, when there's a post entry, players have a tendency to stand around, not Duke. The movement on that one was beautiful. And we saw Fonz this morning at Wofford's shoot around. Anytime Vernon Carey catches the basketball, they are planning to double him. Yes. Not to turn him over, nope. but to get the ball out of his hands. Indeed. Clean look for Holloway. More quickly inside Carey. Huge size advantage. Matthew Hurt brings it back out to Moore. Moore cradles the basketball, missed the runner. And then the foul on the over the back against Vernon Carey Jr. Folks, watch the ball movement here for Duke. As they throw that basketball now inside, the double team's on its way. Look at Carey, eyes up, everyone moving on the backside there. And what a beautiful pass there by Goldwire. That's how you break that down on the double team. And well done. I think Trey Jones would approve. Now, Jordan Goldwire, even before the injury suffered by Trey Jones that has him out tonight, the strained foot. Goldwire lately, last three games, fans averaging 24 minutes per. Yeah. So in his three years here at Duke, by far the last couple of weeks have been the most playing time he's seen. Yeah, indeed. And he's been very productive during that play in time as well. And he's been getting it done at the defensive end as well. Hard to replace Trey Jones at this end. Layup made by Messiah Jones. But Goldwire's got the basketball now. Also an excellent defender. Duke's got to continue to throw that basketball inside. Carey over the double team. That's 6'10 against 6'6. Sometimes it's just easy to catch it, hold it high, and shoot yep. it over the top. Keep yep. the game simple. Holloway got free for the easy layup. Right now, with this lineup on the floor, Outside of Goldwire and outside of Cassius Stanley, I think Wofford should continue to attack those guys off the dribble and try to get something going to the rim. Stanley spins. Off the back iron, no. It comes to the Blue Devils. Hurt throws it down. Junior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, with the basketball, uses the screen. Foul called against Jordan Goldwire. Folks, I'm loving the half-court execution by both teams. Look at this ball screen here. A little dive to the basket. Messiah Jones able to receive it and lay it in. And then carry. I'm just a little bit taller than you, so I'm shooting it over the top. Can, can shoot the 15-18-footer. And I agree with Sean Farnham. It's an indictment to the one-and-done rule. They should get rid of that thing as quickly as possible. But it does take Memphis from being, in my, in my judgment, a top-four team getting to the Final Four. Now I think they'll just be a good team, maybe a second-week team in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, they're still ranked in the top 15 in the country. They still have Precious Achua. They yeah. still have Boogie Ellis. Penny Hardaway has him cooking. Yes. But you're right, it probably takes them out of the national championship contention conversation. Yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, you when you get to that level, you have to have somebody unique out there on the floor that when everything slows down, that can get you a bucket. James Wiseman was that guy. And you miss watching a, a rare big who plays with his back to the basket. Oh, yeah. 
block shots and a guy who, when you make mistakes on the defensive end, can erase those mistakes and pull it off the backboard and push it up in transition. So I'm really sad to not have a chance to see him, but it was a business decision on his part. A guy who's going to be a top three pick no matter what. A three-game college career is over. Off the turnover, Matthew Hurt laid it in to nice. stretch Duke's lead to five. Layup missed, it's still five. Hunt has scored eight of Duke's last ten at this end. Yeah, Wofford has missed some easy opportunities, and when you're playing against one of the best teams in the nation, you have to maximize your opportunities. Wofford hasn't done that here early. Goldwire swings the pass to Stanley. Here is the freshman from Los Angeles having trouble getting the handle, and he stepped out of bounds. Too much dribbling there by Duke. That ball's got to change sides of the floor and look to attack on the weak side. But again, the good news is Stanley is fully healthy. Suffered that left hamstring yes. injury versus Winthrop. Missed the game at Michigan State. Did return and played only seven minutes at Virginia Tech. But Coach K told us this morning after shoot around that he is 100 yeah. percent and can play starters minutes tonight. Sure, I've been so impressed with him. I, I, I knew he'd be a great athlete and good defensively. I did not think he would be the high level three point shooter that he's shown to be here early in the season at 43 percent. 15 foul against Wofford, the first against Zion Richardson, the freshman from Plano, Texas. Deloria, good position. Pass a little too tall. Off the hand, though, Storm Murphy, the help side defender. Yeah, Wendell Moore, number zero on White's got to be able to see that fake that pass there to Delaurier and actually hit the wide open Matthew Hurt who was coming up the weak side to the foul line area. Delaurier out. Vernon Carey Jr. back in. Preseason second team all ACC. And he has lived up to it so far. Averaging 18 and a half points, nine rebounds a game, seven double-doubles so far, fifth most in the country. Goldwell, tough bucket. That's a heck of a move. Crossover and a little skip through. That was pretty. Six different Blue Devils have scored. They've got their largest lead of the night. Got to try to get Vernon Carey involved in a ball screen situation here. The giveaway. And here comes Wendell Moore Jr. Make it seven different Blue Devils in the scoring column. There's that Duke defense. It'll stay with the Terriers. Yeah, mistakes, missed opportunities on the offensive end have hurt the Terriers here early. And as he's driving down there, you got to know that Wendell Moore is always looking to play the passing lanes. And wow, he still dunks it just like he did when he was playing for CP3 in high school. <laughs> and he was about that size, too, as a junior. Duke leads the ACC in steals per game at nearly 10 a night. Mm -hmm. Once again, Goldwire jumping into the passing lane. Another deflection. Yeah, you've got to be willing to hold on to your dribble a little longer to make sure that your teammate is open. Those long 15, 18-foot passes don't work against the Blue Devils. Surrendering an 8-0 run, Wofford couldn't wait for the media timeout, so they call timeout, and we'll take a break as well. And when we come back, we will talk with a real are making a positive change in their community. And for you, Elijah, you're a staunch advocate of preventing child abuse. Yes, sir. What brought this about for you, and why is that so important? So, unfortunately, I had a friend experience abuse, and for a very long time, that just put a burden on my heart, because in my mind, why would you dare hurt a child who is innocent and vulnerable and take advantage of that vulnerability. So as the years went on and I learned more and more about the power of marching and I learned about people like Martin Luther King Jr., Angela Davis, people who made a change in marching, I decided that even as a kid, I had the opportunity to speak up and use my voice. So I started marching at a young age. Um, helping prevent child abuse. 
Elijah, that's really mature for you. Who's been the greatest influence on you to help you in your development? Um, honestly, my family. Mm -hmm. My family has been through, been there through thick and thin. My mom is always there if I need just an extra support system, if I need that boost of confidence. Sure. My two brothers, they're the most supportive people I really do know, just because they're always there if I need a ride, if I need extra something. Sure. And especially my sister. My sister's my best friend. <laughs> because she's always there if I need a laugh, if I need a shoulder to lean on, if I need something just to vent and talk about. Sure. So yeah, my family is probably the most supportive people I know. Well, we know you're a huge Duke Blue Devils fan, yeah. Elijah. Who is your favorite all-time Duke Blue Devil? Uh, uh, that's kind of hard, just because, I mean, <laughs> when you're looking at someone like Duke with some phenomenal players, I mean, it's <laughs> a little tough. Can't just pick one, huh? Um, I would head towards Zion Williamson. There you go. There you go. Yeah. That's a good one. Well, what do you think about this year's team? I think this team... It's ready. I mean, they got some big punches in store, so I'm excited to see what they can throw. I love it. I love it. Now, Elijah, I asked you about this off air, but I know my wife's watching, and I want to take her out on a date. Do you think I can borrow that jacket this weekend? I don't know about oh, six, that. Eight, two, six, I think I can <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I'll give it back. I'll even clean it and give it back. It may be a little small. Okay. See? I'm a skinny little boy. <laughs> hey, Elijah, you can say no, sir. That's fine. <laughs> well, we also want to share with the idea that you are a real-life superhero and yes. that uh, you have been welcomed into the Marvel Universe with your very own custom comic book. What is that like to see yourself on a comic book cover? Um, it's really crazy just because I'm one of those comic book nerds kind of people. <laughs> and so to see yourself in the same image and same style as you see people like Spider-Man and sure. Thor and Iron Man. It's really cool. Um, but in my eyes, it's like it goes beyond that. Being a hero goes beyond that. And it really talks about how the fact that I, I remember that we are all heroes mm -hmm. and that we are all capable of doing some very heroic stuff and we are all capable of making a change. And so that's kind of how I see it. I say, yes, I got recognized with it, but we're all capable of doing that type of stuff. That's powerful. So how about you share with us who your favorite superhero is? Um, I think it may be between Spider-Man and Black Panther for sure. Why is that? Just because, I mean, when we look at people like Spider-Man, mm -hmm. it's just a normal kid from a small community. And how even he has taken it upon himself to make a change yes. in his community. And even as a kid who protects his neighborhood and people like Black Panther, he is a king of a whole country. And that's how I kind of see him. all of us. We're all sons and daughters of kings and queens, no matter who we are. And so I think he's really cool just because that's what a king is, someone who protects and represents their country well. Elijah, are you sure you're just 12 years old? <laughs> Check his birth yeah. certificate. Can we see your birth certificate? <laughs> My goodness, I, I can't even tell you how impressed I am with Thank you. Thank you. Just remarkable. Thank so you, you talk so much about your family. Who have you got with you here tonight at Cameron Indoor? So I actually have my brother Malik. And Malik is actually one of the biggest sports players of the house. And so I was like, it's a new game. Might as well spend some quality time together. <laughs> Get a few bro points. <laughs> is, is Malik a uh, Duke fan too? Sir? Is, is, he a Malik, is he a Duke fan also? Yeah, he is. Who, who's his favorite player? He likes Anthony Goldwire. Goldwire. He likes Goldwire. I yeah. like it. Okay. Uh, Jordan Goldwire, a hustler, defensive player. I like it. So do you have any predictions for how this Duke season is going to go the rest of the way? Um, looking at tonight, I think they definitely can pull in a win for sure. Like, they got this in the bag. <laughs> for the rest of the season, I mean, they face some pretty 
tough people, but I think they got it for sure. <laughs> well, we think you've got it, and we Thanks. can't thank you enough for all that you do. Thank you for really making a difference in our world, and, and thank you for joining us here tonight, Elijah. Thank you so much. That is Elijah Lee, just a special young man, and again, he is part of the docuseries Marvel's Hero Project, airing on Disney+. Plus. And the Hero Project, again, tells the stories yeah. of, like, this young man really, truly making a difference. That's so cool. And his Blue Devils, by the way, are up by 10. Kevin Delorier with the block shot. Duke playing tonight without its excellent point guard, Trey Jones, ruled out not long before tip-off. Delorier hit the deck. Saturday on ESPN and on the ESPN app we'll have the first game of the ninth annual Crossroads Classic at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Indiana squares off against Notre Dame, <laughs> noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. No Fox. You don't have any sort of vested interest in that game. Do Not you? at all. The matchup to watch in that game, John Mooney for Notre Dame averaging a double-double, 15 and 13 on the year. Trace Jackson Davis, the freshman at Indiana, has been sensational, 15 and 9 for him. Now, Mooney is averaging 13.4 rebounds a game, tops in the country. And Unreal. I did some digging. Mm -hmm. Your best sophomore year, you went for 12.6 rebounds per game. Am I correct? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is Mooney's got you by a little bit. It's early yet. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fun. Hoosiers and the Irish. This is the largest lead here, Duke and Wofford. Let's see if Donovan Theme Love and the Terriers have one more push in them. Four minutes remaining in the half. Inside they go Goodwin. He's had a productive first half on second effort and missed again. And that's really been the story in this game for Wofford. Missed opportunities at the rim. They've not been able to make their wide open three point shots either. Wendell Moore Jr. Isaiah Bigelow has his pass taken away by Vernon Carey. Duke's length in this game has been a factor here in the first half. And now Moore sort of being used as a point forward with this second unit now. Beats the post nicely on the bounce. Carey missed the turnaround. Out of bounds. Wofford basketball. But once again, we thank Elijah. Part of the boy, Sean, I tell you what, you know, we have had internally throughout ESPN college basketball circles, these debates for a while, is Fonz the nicest man on the planet? Remember, we have, we have, I may buy you dinner tonight. We, we have said unequivocally that he is, but I agree with you, Sean, that we may have a true rival for the Fonz here. I, I'm in trouble, man. He, uh, I mean, what a powerful young man. If he ran for office right now, I'd vote for him. Definitely. Off the curl, Trey Holloway buries the jumper. And that, this is what Wofford really needs. Their leading scorers, Nathan Hoover and Storm Murphy, combined for 29 a game. So far, 0 for 7 in this game. From the corner, O'Connell now. Carey throws it down. So that's just being big right there. Yeah, 6'10", 270, yeah. And, and, you know, when he gets the ball that close to the oh, rim, yeah. what on earth can the Terriers do? They didn't bring it down either. Impressive. Good one. Able to get it back out to theme love. Mm. Look at the screen. is Goodwin and that is number two on the transfer from the College of Charleston he was a key reserve on last year's 31 yeah. Terriers team averaged about 4.4 rebounds playing a much bigger role this yeah. year for the Terriers yeah, it's, it's, it's the 
Duke is doing a much better job, something Carolina didn't do, which is they're doing a terrific job of once that basketball is picked up, they're fanning out to shooters. Carolina held on a little too long, and that's what allowed Wofford to get some easy opportunities. Duke's doing a terrific job in that phase of the game right now. Murphy feeding the post to Jones. Well, that's a tough assignment to try and go over or through Vernon Carey. Yeah, well, especially when you're only about 6'5 there. He should have passed that ball out. You've got to find Carey here. Free along the baseline. Stanley had an opening. They just couldn't find it. O'Connell making it tough on Storm Murphy. Final minute of play here in the first half. Off the bounce, Hollowell, no. The Duke's forcing Wofford to play one-on-one -on -one right now. That's not their game. Timeout, Blue Devils. We'll take a break and be back to Cameron in 30 seconds. To establish a run game early to allow him to be able to throw some long passes down the field. That'll be the key to the game. Duke with a 13 point lead, 36 23. At the point, Jordan Goldwire getting the start tonight for the injured Trey Jones. Deloria, tough pass and a whistle as Matthew Hurt tried to use his height and height to receive that pass. Yeah, 6 6'10", just a little X cut down the lane. He submarined a little bit as he was trying to come up with that possession. Well, there is Trevor Stump, perhaps the toughest guy on this Wofford roster. He has had multiple spinal surgeries. He uh, took a medical red shirt in 2016-17. Last year, limited to just eight games, played in January, February, and March. And he's just picked up his third personal foul. And what that does is, from an emotional standpoint, kind of takes the air out of the, you wind out of your sails a little bit for Wofford, but with only 20 seconds to go, hopefully they can rebound it here, get it in bounds, and bring it up the floor. They'll get an opportunity at the last shot if they can keep Duke off the glass. Tough assignment there. Personal goes against Hollowell. That is his first. And so now to the line to shoot three. Joey Baker, who in last year's unbelievable recruiting class was kind of the forgotten man. You know, he wound up inexplicably having to burn his red shirt in mid-February after yeah. Zion went down. Played a total of only four games in 18 minutes. Yeah. For, for this team with him getting some minutes now what it does is because he's shooting 48 percent from the three-point line when you put him in with vernon carry now it opens up more space for vernon to be able to go one-on-one -on, -one on the interior so i think he's going to be a vital cog to this duke machine especially as they get into conference play and he's found a good role averaging six and a half points yeah. knocking down nearly half of his three-point tries so far this year <laughs> For Duke, the bench has outscored the starters' fines 22-17. Wow. How about that? And whistle is against Baker. And you know, one of the best stories I heard last year in college basketball with, uh, with Baker and his classmates, mm -hmm. Sports Illustrated wanted to come here and do yeah. a cover photo yes. of the four mm -hmm. freshmen, including Trey Jones, who's still here. Yep. Zion Williamson, without batting an eyelash and not trying to make a statement, just said, well, there's five of us. We're not taking a picture without Joey Baker. So he wound up on the digital cover for SI to beat the buzzer. Trey Holloway will give the Terriers a little boost going into the locker room. And that's what Duke's defense has forced Wofford to do, to try to play one-on-one -on -one in space. And that's low percentage shots for Wofford, but that's a big three to give them some momentum going into halftime. No question he beat the buzzer. Good way to finish out the first 20 minutes for the underdog Terriers. 
But it's Duke in control, 39-26. But to get it down in the painted area, get on that offensive glass. So sometimes it pays to be big. Vernon Carey with a huge dunk there. And now all of a sudden, Basquiat's going down to the painted area. You think you lose it. Vernon Carey yet again using his size. The two bigs combined for 16 points in the first half. I like the intentionality of getting it into the painted area when you're the bigger team. Jordan Goldwire gets the start again in the second half, filling in for the injured Trey Jones, who it was announced late this afternoon by Coach K. It is out of an abundance of caution that we're holding Trey out tonight. We are confident this is minor, and we expect him back very soon. It's a mild sprain of his left foot suffered in practice in recent days. And Coach K did tell us this morning that if this was a postseason game, a yeah. big game, he would be able to play. Yeah, I think it was smart to protect him. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's the premier defensive player on the point guard position in our country. And so you don't want the franchise player to go down here early. I think it's wise to rest him. And we set off the top fines mm -hmm. that without him, the other guy's going to have to pick it up as Kerry lays it in. All nine Blue Devils who have checked into the game tonight have scored. Uh, Everybody has picked up that slack. Indeed, and I don't think Jordan Goldwire has gotten enough credit for the job that he does on the basketball, whether he's playing with Trey or without him. And tonight, he's been up and into the basketball, making good decisions on the offensive end as well. Meanwhile, how at this end is Wofford get Storm Murphy and Nathan Hoover involved. Got to run those guys off some screens because what's happening is Duke's defensive pressure is forcing Wofford to play one-on-one -on -one because they're not leaving any of the shooters. And so now you got to run those guys off some curl screens to try to get them some clean looks. That was one of the emphasis for Jay McCauley at practice this morning for Wofford. He said, we got to set good screens. Yes. We got to do a better job on curls and back cuts if we want to get open looks. And that has not happened with any consistency so far in this game. This is Hoover, preseason all SOCON. Average 14 per game last year, averaging about the same this year, but not nearly as efficient. Those were his first two tonight. Yeah, I think he's putting a lot of pressure on himself this season. Remember, last year he wasn't the number one guy. He was maybe third or fourth down the line. Cam Jackson, Fletcher McGee were the guys that drawing all the attention, so he was able to get some clean looks. Now he's one of the top two guys on the scouting report, and I think he's kind of trying to do too much and put too much pressure on himself. He's got to relax, and as he relaxes, the shots will start to go down. That is the fourth foul on Chavez Goodwin. So the only real size that Wofford has inside to try and combat yeah. the bigs for Duke is in real foul trouble. And he had some really good success driving Carey early in this game, but this has been... Vernon Carey, I thought he was a little hesitant earlier in the season, but since then, I mean, look at the numbers, folks, over his last seven. He's been absolutely dominant, has been knocking down his free throws as well. I think he's around 62% on the year, but over the last six games or so, he's been shooting it at like a 77% clip. So you can see him continue to grow in his role. And again, How about that hair, bro? I wish I had some. <laughs> you rocked a pretty good head of hair for a long time. Uh, emphasis on a long time. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing Kerry does is you were talking about Fonz. He gets to the line so much, you need for him to be yeah. better than a 50% foul yeah. shooter. And if he can continue being 75% as he has been in recent days, that's going to be pretty good. Well, he's made 20 of his last 26 coming into this game. That's Trevor Stump. With the bucket, fifth-year senior from Plainfield, Illinois, and the foul against Carey. Well, and I, I like what Wofford's doing here. You take away their three-point game. I talked about it in the first half. They've got to be willing to put that basketball on the floor because there's essentially four guards. Well, right now, five guards on the floor. So you can drive the bigs of Duke. Anytime they see any of those bigs, White, Carey, they've got to put their head down and drive that basketball to the hole to try to get two points on the board. Finds White. Foul in the paint, off the ball. And to me, that's just Messiah Jones trying to beat Vernon Carey to the spot. Yeah, yeah, and what it is these days, back in my day, they would allow you to kind of chuck that cutter coming across. Right. Now you got to allow him freely to come across or run into your body and go behind. But that's a huge challenge for Messiah Jones, who's only about 6'5". 
And so the red shirt freshman out of Simeon High School in Chicago goes out with his third personal. And now it's the seven footer, seven one, David Applegren, sophomore from Sweden, who's going to try and bang inside with Vernon Carey. O'Connell goes down, no call. Wow. Miss Dorn Murphy wide open in the right corner, number 15 in black. Ball goes out of bounds off of Duke, and the Terriers will have a fresh shot clock. Yeah, Wofford got lucky there. Because again, when you're playing against a great defensive team, you gotta be able to find the open creases and open guys. Duke didn't match up the stump in the right corner, and he was wide open for a three. Hurt and Moore return. White and Stanley take a seat. And at the next stoppage, Joey Baker will come back for the Blue Devils. Chris Green. Holloway. Tried to thread the needle, had it taken away by Goldwine. You know, in spite of his limited minutes this year, Goldwire is among the top ten in the ACC in steals per game, getting it done here with a much bigger role tonight. Well, what a good read there by Goldwire. He could, he's the one responsible for playing, too. Could read the eyes of the ball handler, knew exactly where he was throwing it, sold out, got in the middle of the lane, and then he is off to the races. How about the change of speed, change of direction, the bump, and the finish? What a beautiful play end-to-end -end from Goldwire. Now, last time out, 13 days ago, he had a career-high 10 points at Virginia Tech. And throughout his first two years, he had his moments. I mean, Goldwire was a huge spark mm -hmm. for a couple of huge come-from-behind wins last year at Louisville and then the game against UNC in the ACC tournament. Yeah, he's really come on as a late. He's always been a good defensive player, but now he's scoring the basketball also. And much more, adding much more depth in that backcourt for Duke. And at 6 2, he gets up above the rim to grab that rebound. Ball comes back out to Moore. Wide open look. Baker just a little strong. And the foul's going to go against Bigelow. And he just stands under the basket with a wry <laughs> smile on his face. What am I going to do with that? What can he do? 6'9", Matthew Hurt, long arms, and he's really not even jumping. He's just using his length and height to be able to keep that possession. Foul after the inbound. Quickly, Bigelow, the redshirt freshman from Greensboro, picks up two fouls. He and Messiah Jones both sat out last year as healthy redshirts, yeah. working on their games, working on their bodies. They were so good last year and so deep, they didn't need them to win their 30 games and run the table in the SOCOM. Indeed. Keep in mind, this is a Terriers program that was ranked as high as 19th in the country last year in the final polls. Mm. Had a magical run. Fletcher McGee, elite level three-point shooter. Cam Jackson on the interior with all kind of shooting around him. And this year, they come into Cameron with a 7-4 and four record, riding a five-game winning streak. Baker for three. First field goal of the night for the sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Norm Murphy's first three-point shot of the night is short. Couple of cracks at it. Baker pulls down the rebound. Moore leans in. Can't get the roll. And Wofford has the basketball. Storm Murphy grew up in Middleton, Wisconsin, told us his mom and dad, who are here at Cameron tonight, Took him when he was in high school as a Duke fan on a trip to Tobacco Road. They were able to get onto the Duke campus, but not into Cameron because it was closed that day for a function. So until practice last night, this lifelong Duke fan had never been able to step into this building. Pretty <laughs> cool that. stuff. That is really cool. 
He's not been able to get any airspace tonight to get any clean looks. Dukes focused the detail on the defensive end regarding him, and Nathan Hoover has been tremendous. Well, that's the stroke that got Joey Baker ranked number 41 in last year's ESPN 100. What a weapon in this is sophomore year for Coach K. He had 48% from three. You just cannot leave Joey Baker on dribble penetration. Duke's getting, now all of a sudden you kick it out to Joey Baker and he is knocking that thing down. Seven. Five shooting, having a big night here, starting to pick it up with a couple of three point shots of the second. Yeah, in the first half he was able to get it done on the foul line, five of five, but now in the second half, all of a sudden getting dribble penetration to his side, his guy helps and he's been wide open to knock down a couple three balls. I mean, the kid's shooting 48% from the three-point line on the year. You can't leave Joey Baker. Storm Murphy finally gets himself on the board. A little misdirection, a little down screen, able to create some separation for him to get that shot off. Need a lot more. There's a lot of time left in this game, but... Can't be giving up easy opportunities like that inside. Again, Matthew Hurt, 6'9 long, and there just is not any defense for that for the Terriers on the floor right now. Well, the Duke Blue Devils are ranked fourth in the country, but are, in the, are they in the midst of a Duke signature season? We'll discuss rededicated the court in honor of Mike Krzyzewski, but after practice last night, he kind of had his players take ownership of the court by signing their own names along in front of the Duke bench to say, this is our court, this is our building. Yes, it's Coach K court, but he wants his Blue Devils to be the ones who own this floor. And they have certainly owned it tonight on the defensive end of the floor and taken advantage of the side that they have on the interior. So I think the team got the message. Well, this isn't the first time Coach K has done this. About 15 years ago, he had his team go and sign the center court logo before Maryland came in. And apparently Gary Williams saw that. It wasn't really thrilling. <laughs> and uh, Duke went out and laid it on the Terrapins that night. And I've been on the back end of some of that later. I was 0 for 4 against Duke when I was in college. Yeah, you played twice here in this building as a visitor with the Fighting Irish. What's it like to come in and see Coach K on the sideline and to see the fans and the students hanging over the scores table? What's it like to be out there? Yeah, it was more of the fans. I, I was really in awe of the energy and how long they would hold their chance and the intensity behind it. I love energy in the building, and I feet fed off of that type of energy. So Cameron has always been, to me, outside of Rupp, maybe, the place to play college basketball. Those two places equal in my mind. And while this tonight is an awesome environment, it still is not what it usually is because most of the students are gone for Christmas break. Mm. So we've got some students, but it's the folks from around here and who've traveled the distance to fill in those seats and make sure we've got another sellout crowd. They have not had an empty seat in this building for a Duke basketball game in decades. The last wow. non-sellout was against Boston College in 1990. How about that? Talk about sustained excellence and being rewarded for it. It's exactly what we're seeing here at Duke. And for the Duke basketball players, they'll go on their Christmas break following this game tonight and won't have to be back on campus until the 26th to then get ready for their game against Brown on the 28th. Vernon Carey. That's just absolutely unfair. Vernon Carey out there working on his little Moses, inner Moses Malone out there, throwing it up on the glass, going to get it. <laughs> Racking up some offensive rebound totals. It's like you trying to post me up. <laughs> Not fair. <laughs> First foul on Matthew Hurt. Coming up next, can Auburn remain undefeated? North Carolina State will try to take down the 12th ranked team in the country. 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. 
Will Auburn. Bruce Pearl go to bed tonight still undefeated? Oh, man, they got a great shot, especially playing at home. Austin Wiley is finally healthy on the interior, so now they have a guy that they can give it to on the low post, can make a 15-footer, and still keep the floor space for the dribble penetration. I really like this Auburn team. I don't think they're as good as last year's team. They don't shoot it as well. They don't turn it over or turn you over as much, but it's still a high octane offense that Bruce Pearl has. As long as they pick up Markel Johnson from about 50 feet away. <laughs> Indeed. That'll be good. Off the turnover, Terriers on the run. Haven't said that much tonight. Foul on the putback. We've got free throws when we come back to Cameron Indoor Stadium. Fourth ranked Duke, well in control over Wofford. I get the sense that out of the two co-captains, Jack White and Javin Delorier, Jack's the one who's sucking up a little bit there. <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> but I like Coach K's little shimmy there, man. I give him an eight for that one. That's pretty good. All right. Well, the resume speaks for itself. It really is remarkable. Yeah. Nine national players of the year, including Zion Williamson last year. Actually, it's 11 total. Two of the nine have won twice. Our colleague Jay Williams and J.J. Reddick, both were national players of the year. And, and I, I marvel at the fact that he is 72 years old, but still seems as connected with his players yeah. as back in the day with Johnny Dawkins and Jay Billis. Oh, when we walked in the shoot around today, it was as if we were walking into a classroom. It was quiet. Yep. You could only hear his voice. You could hear sneakers squeaking. And then when there was a stoppage of play to move on to the next thing, so quiet, workmanlike. I was really impressed with the uh, shoot arounds. I've had the privilege of going in the past, but I was really impressed by the players locked in this morning and his ability to convey his messages to his players. Another thing I really like, Fonz, is that he makes sure that he keeps his former players on staff. He's had at yes. least three former Duke captains on staff since 1996. Well, they practically run the shoot rounds, and then you would hear him kind of pipe in in certain areas, and I love his development of his staff because it puts them in position to go on to be great head coaches too. And the players like Wendell Moore understand that when the assistant coaches tell them something, it is coming directly from the coach, exactly. and they understand exactly what they are going through now as 18 and 19 year olds. Yeah, the buy in for the freshmen is what I've been so impressed with, and especially with Zion's crew last year. I asked Coach, I was like, Coach, what's the buy in been like? He's like, when you have two leaders like RJ Barrett and Zion Williamson, it's been immediate, and it seems like these guys, this year's crop, has done the same. Fourth foul on Messiah Jones. Chavez Goodwin and Trevor Stump also have four personal fouls. So three different Terriers in deep trouble. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, I mean, this is a Duke team right now mm -hmm. with a 9-1 and one record, have won three in a row. They're the only team in the country with four quad one wins. They are building a resume to, uh, resume to be a one seed. And we're seeing tonight without Trey Jones. They've been able to have other guys fill in like Jordan Goldwire. When Cassius Stanley went down, other players in recent games have picked up their play. Where do you see this Duke team as we get ready to go full bore in ACC play? Yeah, they initially, I thought that Louisville uh, was the best team in the ACC, but their shot selection at times, especially Jordan Nora, I've had to step back one. I would give Duke the advantage right now, and part of that, to your point, they've had guys like Trey Jones out, and it allows other guys to be able to get some experience and develop their games as well, and I think Joey Baker is going to be huge, not only in ACC play, but in the NCAA tournament as well. The three by Zion Richardson brings a timeout. Well, let's take a look at the preseason poll in the ACC where Duke was one, followed by North Carolina, then Louisville, Virginia, Florida State, the top five, then NC State, your Irish, my orange. <laughs> and then the bottom of it. I mean, obviously, North Carolina is not the number two team in the no. ACC. Even at full strength, you can't imagine that they're going to get anywhere near that. But other than... Carolina and maybe even Syracuse what has most surprised you out of that poll this year so far I think the it's it's been Florida State I thought with everything that they lost coming into this season this year I thought they'd take a little bit of a step back the Trent Forrest has been terrific MJ Walker's been fantastic and I'm telling you th this is a Florida State team that could potentially finish in the top three of the ACC because they haven't missed a beat Devin Vassell is possibly a pro. He could potentially be a first-rounder. And, and why do we as a national media 
forever underestimate what we're going to see out of Tallahassee. Every year. <laughs> it's true. It is very and, true. And all Leonard Hamilton does yeah. is win 25 games or more every year. <laughs> every single year. Here's Baker again. Boy, he's found the range. And that's what happens when you have a guy like Vernon Carey on the interior that you have to pay so much attention to. It allows some of the perimeter players from Duke to get some clean looks. Joey Baker's been <laughs> awesome from the three-point line tonight. Meanwhile, the same can't be said for the Terriers, who on the year have been so good shooting the basketball. Uh, Duke's been able to throw it inside, a good dribble penetration and draw. Baker doing a great job of flowing in behind. And how about Goldwire with the vision and the awareness and the bench is loving it. There's Baker with 14 points. Hurt has 10. The bench has been delivering all night. Going with a nine-man rotation. Good win. And there is Vernon Carey with those broad shoulders clearing another defensive rebound. You see how Duke, though, is staying at home on the perimeter? They're not allowing Wofford to get any clean looks at the basket. The defensive game plan for Duke has been superb tonight. Vernon Carey, 16.7 rebounds, looking for what would be his eighth double-double of the year. Stump gets to carry and says, you know what, I want to get rid of this basketball. <laughs> and if you're a perimeter defender, having a rim protector like him is a tremendous luxury. Absolutely, because now you can get up and in without fear of getting beaten. Now, you don't want to get beaten, but it's comforting knowing that you have somebody who can erase some mistakes on the backside. I had the privilege of playing with both Dikembe Mutombo and with Alonzo Mourning. You talk about two guys that can go get it. <laughs> Long two for Baker. That matches his career high from the Winthrop game on November 29th. His emergence off the bench is why Duke is so dangerous now and a threat to be a Final Four team. Joey Baker. We'll take a break and the studio will have an update on an interesting game going on in Jersey. That's right, Kevin. Looking forward to seeing the Wolfpack and the Tigers go at it. And we're talking about the Big Ten Conference. In spite of what the Terps are doing in Jersey right now, you still think the Big Ten is the best conference so far? No, no question about it. Because if you look at their... Joe Baker continues to smoke from three. Ohio State, Michigan. And then you look at the bottom of the Michigan State. You look at the bottom of the league or the middle of the league. Iowa. It can beat anyone anytime. They have a stud and Luca Garza on the interior who just dropped 44 on Michigan. Penn State's an NCAA tournament team. I think Pat Chambers, this is the group that's going to get there this year. Minnesota gets a huge win on their home floor against Ohio State uh, last week. And so the Big Ten is by far the best conference in the country. Well, in this crazy season that I think is probably going to be crazy right through the Final Four. Put back by Matthew Hurt. Is there a number one team right now? Is there, should we even have a number one team? Yeah. <laughs> there's not a, the, the problem we have this year is there's no dominant team. But I think right now, Kansas is the, is and should be the number one team in the country. My only concern about that group coming into the year is would they be able to knock down the three ball at any clip so that Azabuki wouldn't be, teams have a tendency to double him, 
and you got to have some people on the outside who can knock down some shots. The trans Iowa transfer, Isaiah Moss, shot 40% last year with Iowa, and now this year shooting about 38, 39% from three. But Ochai Abaji, who throughout his career has been more of a driver, this kid is absolutely knocking it down, shooting plus 40% from three this year. And I think the development of their three-point shooters is what makes them so good. Stay hot, Joey Baker. Give him a career-high 22. Good answer by Hollowell, his third straight triple. Finally able to get some wiggle room and get a clean look. But I tell you what, Sean, if this Duke team can continue to shoot the three ball at this clip, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to beat them. And the emergence of Joey Baker has now made them, in my estimation and in my judgment, the number one team in the ACC. Here is the man of the hour. Baker gives it back to Goldwire. He's got the hot hand too. <laughs> Under five minutes remaining, we've got a foul in the front court as White and Bigelow came together. Saturday on ESPN and on the ESPN app, we'll have the first game of the ninth annual Crossroads Classic at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Indiana squares off against Notre Dame, noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. The four Indiana men's teams, Indiana, Notre Dame, Butler, and Purdue, Rotate matchups to make up this Crossroads Classic. Right, Indiana's going to have to run Notre Dame off that three-point line. They've struggled from the three-point line on the season, but lately, 20 made threes two, game, in their two games ago, 15 in their last win at home against UCLA. Notre Dame's starting to find the range. Hoover. With deafening chance of air ball every time he touches it, <laughs> yes. able to finally put one in. Indeed. Well, he and Storm Murphy were scoreless in the first half, and they've not really been able to pick it up. In the second, as Vernon Carey just keeps on keeping on. Yeah, I guess the 1 3 1 zone, the soft spots are the short corners, and Carey there able to just post up on the block. Not enough size and strength across the front line for Waffer to be able to contain Mr. Carey. Go ahead, Go ahead, 2-3 zone look here. It's a matchup, actually. Man-to-man -man here. Into the game for the first time, one of the four captains, Justin Robinson, the graduate student from San Antonio, number 50 in white. way to announce yourself in the ball game the admiral's son with the rejection it's been all blue devils here in the second half up 27 sports center tonight after the ncaa women's volleyball final four with bucci and michael east they'll have lakers bucks reactions plus how did harden and westbrook do against paul george and Kawhi? Here from Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins ahead of their Monday Night Football Showdown. Sports Center after Minnesota Stanford on ESPN and the ESPN app. And so uh, that's around 11.30. And then at midnight, Fonz, you've got another suggestion for what folks might be able to do. Are you suggesting that everyone at midnight goes and see Star Wars? I think that's possible. Let's go do it. The new movie, Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, yes. opens in theaters at midnight. Indeed. There are some midnight showings, so uh, after Bucci and Eves do their thing, why not? I love it. May the Force be with you. <laughs> the Force has certainly been with <laughs> Duke tonight on both ends of the floor. The defense has been spectacular, and offensively, they've done a great job of keeping it simple, allowing their bigs to take advantage of their size on the interior, and Joey Baker's been magnificent off the bench. And you know what? Vernon Carey keeps hitting his free throws, as he has yeah. in recent weeks. He's up to 20 points, nine rebounds. Robinson with his second block shot of the night. He can make this. I thought he was going to shoot it. <laughs> 
thought he should have. Yeah. Perhaps he had visions of going in and throwing it down. Possibly. Well, I'll tell you what, the Wofford Terriers, as their coach Jay McCauley told us earlier today, we're going to fight you. I mean, this yes. is a program that has been built over the years to sustain. And so their trip to Tobacco Road this week, they're going to go one and one. That's not yeah. bad. Uh, their next game, they got one more game before Christmas, and for Coach McCauley, it's a great opportunity. He's a uh, Pope High School graduate. His varsity basketball coach, Pat Abney, going to bring the players from this year's Pope team to Kennesaw State this Sunday, a chance to see the Wofford Terriers in action. Wow, that's special, and they'll be proud, too, of how hard this team both prepares and how hard they play. Storm Murphy. Timeout Terriers. As I just said, they're going to keep fighting you all yeah. the way to the finish. That may be only the second clean look he's gotten all night. You know, as an illustration of the toughness of this Wofford program, they came into this building two years ago, and their leader at that time was a point guard named Eric Garcia, mm -hmm. who had previously broken his jaw, yeah. had it wired shut, came and played the game here against Duke, and it was so impactful in the mind of Coach K that a couple of years later, he ran into one of the guys who works for Wofford and said, oh, I remember that kid who played with the, the jaw wired shut against us. It made an impression on him, and that's kind of what you get from the Wofford Terriers. Toughness. Here you see they're on a five-game winning streak that uh, is about to come to an end, but this is a team that was picked fourth in the preseason in the SoCon, and the SoCon's off to a great start yeah. to the year with East ETSU, yeah. UNC Greensboro, yeah. Furman, and then Wofford, but the Terriers are going to be in the mix. Oh, there's no question about it. And you talk about some elite-level guards in the SoCon, East Tennessee, Bo Hodges, Trey Boyd, and then UNCG, Isaiah Miller averaging about 18 points a game, and... You know, Storm Murphy just hasn't been able to get any, any airspace tonight, so we haven't gotten a chance to see his brilliance, but there's no doubt that Wofford's going to be in the mix. Here's a look at Jay McCauley, 36-year-old, native of Marietta, Georgia, and there is the SOCON preseason poll. And as mentioned, some of these teams have uh, caught your attention with their early season non-conference wins, and that's going to help the ratings, and that's going to help Whoever yeah. one or two teams that get into the NCAA tournament field of 68 for their seeding going forward ETSU yeah. beat LSU the other night yeah. UNC Greensboro has won at Georgetown. Yeah. It's a good conference East Tennessee State is one of those teams that they get into the NCAA tournament. They can win a game. They have all five of their starters back from last year. Well, Fonz Friday, tip off your weekend with the NBA on ESPN and the ESPN app. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown at 7 p.m. Eastern. Then Joel Embiid and the 76ers host Chris Daps Porzingis and the Mavericks at the Wells Fargo Center. Sixers are tied for the NBA best 14 wins at home this season. The Mavs are 10 and 2 on the road this season, so yeah. clearly something has to give. But I just love watching Luka Doncic. Uh, yeah. Is he going to be? He's going to be out for a little while. He won't yeah. be at, at that. But Christoph Przingis has really found his stride there. 23 points a game, 12 rebounds over the last four. And how about Joel Embiid responding to yep. Charles Barkley? And <laughs> Shaq <laughs> said he needs to be dominant night in and night out with a 38-point game against the Celtics. That is, that is the matchup to watch. I love Chuck on PTI last night saying, well, we were wrong. I was wrong. What are you going to do? And, yeah, it's amazing uh, the quick turnaround they've had in Dallas with Porzingis and Luka Doncic. He's so much fun to watch. Unguardable. 6'7", point guard. Deep range, mid-game to the rim, an excellent passer as well. Pass deflected out of bounds by Mike Buckmeyer, who is a Duke Athletics legacy. His dad was a tremendous soccer player for a national championship team back in 1986. Getting an opportunity to play late here tonight. been the one man who's been able to knock down shots consistently yeah. tonight. 
Terriers will keep it out of bounds. Hollowell's got 17 points. He's the only Terrier in double figures wow. in the ball game. And folks, Storm Murphy, number five in black, Nathan Hoover, number 10, came in averaging 15 and 14 respectively, and they were silenced by this Duke defense. But underneath, Delorier wasn't ready for it, but finds O'Connell for three. Everybody's in the end. Indeed. The ball movement for Duke tonight has been a beautiful thing to watch. Hey. Robinson with the foul. He thought he had his third block shot. <laughs> And that young man is kind of the vocal leader. And it's interesting, yeah. his role, you know, he's been on the team four years and has not gotten regular minutes, but he is so well-respected, just like his dad. Had a chance to talk to him last year before the Army game. Yeah. Very impressive. And the younger players who come and go all seem to have the respect that you would hope out of a senior captain. Well, it works so hard in practice, to your point. You know, leadership, especially as a player, comes in more than but I'll narrow it down to two forms you got to be able to be a hard worker by example but you also have to be a good vocal leader as well and he combines both aspects of being a good leader out there on the floor I have tremendous respect for number 50 and white out there well, as mentioned after this game the Duke players will head to their respective homes for the Christmas break they will be back on campus on the 26th for an 11:30 a.m. tip off against Brown on the 28th which you can see here on ESPN 2 and then before you know it it's all ACC play unreal right back at it O'Connell that's a long two Well, I have a feeling Coach K and his players are going to have themselves a joyous holiday season coming off of this performance. And I certainly hope the Terriers do as well. They've got one more game before Christmas. But an impressive showing after 13 days off for the fourth-ranked Duke Blue Devils. And that last play was indicative of the night that Duke's had defensively. Their defense was locked in on Wofford tonight. Eighth double-double of the year for Vernon Carey Jr. to lead the way. Coming up, more college hoops on ESPN2. But first, we're going to send you back to the studio for more updates as we get you ready for the big North Carolina State-Auburn game on ESPN2.